Hello everyone, hope you are doing great. It's finally the start of the season of math competitions, and today we'll be looking at the last problem of this year's AMC 12A. Let's get right into the question. Let dn denote the number of positive integer divisors of n, including 1 and n. For example, d of 1 is 1, d of 2 is 2, d of 12 is 6. This function is known as the divisor function. Let fn be equal to dn divided by cube root of n. So there is a unique positive integer capital N such that f of capital N is bigger than fn for all positive integers n not equal to capital N. What is the sum of digits of capital N? Basically, we need to find the, the value of n that maximizes f. So, one of the things you might try is to write out a formula for fn as follows. If n has the fo following prime factorization, uh, p1 to the power of alpha 1, dot 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 to pr to the power of alpha r, then we know that the numerator dn is the product alpha 1 plus 1 times alpha 2 plus 1, dot 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 times alpha r plus 1. And the, the denominator is simply the cube root of n. But this does not seem very useful because we don't even know which primes are prime factors of n. So let's adjust things slightly. How about we write n in this form instead, 2 to the power of some alpha 1, 3 to the power of some alpha 2, and so on, where the alpha could be 0 if the prime is not a prime factor of n. Now we can write out fn as a successive product of fractions as shown. Notice that we can try to maximize each fraction individually by fiddling with each alpha 1 at a time. So let's look, for example, at the first fraction. If alpha starts off at 0, the fraction reads 1 over 1. What happens if we increase alpha 1 at a time? Well, the numerator changes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and so on, while the denominator keeps getting multiplied by cube root of 2. So when we make the first increment, the numerator changes by a factor of 2 while the denominator changes by a factor of cube root of 2, which is an overall increase. So let's increase this alpha by 1 and see whether we should increase alpha further. This time, the numerator will change by a factor of 3 over 2 because the numerator changes from the value 2 to the value 3. Meanwhile, the denominator changes by a factor of cube root of 2. Again, this is an overall increase. You can see this because 27 over 8 is bigger than 2. Shall we increase alpha further? Yes, because the numerator will now change by a factor of 4 over 3, while the denominator changed by a factor of cube root of 2. Again, an overall increase because 64 over 27 is bigger than 2. Should we increase further? No, because doing so will now lower the value of the fraction. 5 over 4 is smaller than the cube root of 2. Therefore, we stop here, and the optimal value of alpha 1 is 3. Once we understand this reasoning, we can quickly apply this reasoning for the other alphas. For the next fraction, what we have changed now is that the denominator is now multiplied by cube root of 3 at each increment. We again find the optimal stopping point when the numerator no longer increases more than the denominator with the next increment of alpha. In this case, the optimal alpha is 2. Similarly, the optimal alpha 3 is the value 1. And the optimal alpha 4 is the number 1. Lastly, for primes larger than or equal to 11, the optimal alpha is to stick to 0. Putting all this together, we see that fn is maximized when n equals to 2520, which has 9 as its sum of digits. So what do you think of this problem as problem 25 of the AMC? Stay tuned for coverage of more competitions in the coming months, and see you soon.